I'm Colin Price. I'm the Technology Communications Manager with Nissan North America and I'm going to talk about the 2009 GTR. This is the first time it's become a global car. So the first time it's been made in left-hand drive and the first time it's ever come to the United States. A lot of the details are what makes it special. The shape of the car was actually determined by a lot of wind tunnel testing. Spent about a year and a half in the wind tunnel refining all the details on the car to get it to be very efficient. It has a 0.27 coefficient of drag and also to keep it quiet. One of the objectives was to be able to carry on a, a normal conversation between the passenger and the driver at 300 kilometers per hour or 186 miles an hour so it's very quiet at speed. Every engine goes through a break-in process on a dynamometer and goes through testing on the dynamometer. It spends about an hour, a total of an hour on the dyno. And then the output of the engine is actually matched to the transmission and they adjust the clutches to match the output of the engine. Built from the ground up for this car, it's called a VR38 engine. It makes 480 horsepower, 430 pound-feet of torque. And the neat thing about the engine is, first off, they're all hand-built in a clean room environment in Yokohama, Japan by a single technician. I think there's actually a total of eight, maybe nine guys in the world that build GTR engines. One of the cool features about the, uh, the engine on the GTR is in the cylinder liners, rather than being traditional cast iron sleeves, it uses a plasma coat cylinder liner. The advantage of this is that, number one, it's lighter, but the bigger advantage is that it allows the heat to transfer from the combustion chamber to the water jackets more quickly. And it allows us to actually run higher combustion chamber temperatures so that we can actually run the air fuel mixture ratio closer to stoichiometric, to the ideal stoichiometric mi mixture, and not have to run it extra rich to keep it cool. So the, the engine's very, very efficient, is the bottom line. Transaxle transmission actually sits between the rear seats, it's lined up with the rear axle. So there's a drive shaft that goes from the engine directly back to the, the transaxle between the rear seats and then there's a second drive shaft that comes forward on the right hand side of the car in the center tunnel to provide power to the front axle for the all wheel drive system. So the transmission, the rear differential and the all wheel drive system are all housed at the back of the car and what that allows us to do is balance the weight distribution in the car so that a similar amount of weight is on the rear axle as what's on the front axle of the car. As we move down the side of the car you'll notice that there are small details like this ridge on the top edge of the fender and this is designed to, to allow the air to move smoothly around the front wheels and tires. There's vents that are functional here on the back edge of the front fender and these actually vent the air from the front wheel well and what allows it to do is as the air is flowing down the side of the car and the air is being vented out of the front wheel well it keeps it smooth flowing smoothly down the side of the car to make it efficient as it, as it flows through the air at high speeds. Same thing as you look at the overall shape of the car, this, this kink in the C-pillar is designed to direct the airflow to the rear wing, so it's efficient flowing air to the rear wing. If the air is tumbling, then it doesn't allow the rear wing to function effectively to create downforce. By, by raising the small kink in the, the C-pillar, it actually directed the air and smoothly transitioned the air onto the rear wing so it can create downforce at speed. Another nice aerodynamic detail is the, the flush uh, door handles. In order to uh, keep it smooth, the airflow smooth, they made them flush. And you simply push in on the back and, and uh, pull out on the front of the handle to open the, open the door. While we're here, I'll talk about the wheels and tires. It's specially developed 20-inch wheels, and they're actually filled with nitrogen because nitrogen is less volatile and less susceptible to pressure changes with heat buildup. So as the tire gets hot, they'll have less pressure gain with nitrogen, and all the tires are nitrogen filled. The, the brakes are Brembo, specially developed Brembo brakes, 15-inch rotors front and rear with a six-piston caliper up front and a four-piston caliper in the rear. I like to draw the analogy that the brake rotors are the size of a large pizza. So they're very large and they work very, very well. I would like to point out the traditional four-ring taillights that have been a Skyline GTR trademark for a long, long time. Also notice that rear wing, as we talked about, is very effective at creating downforce at the rear and it's combined with the under tray, the carbon fiber rear diffuser, to create downforce to keep the car pinned to the pavement at, at high speeds. The other thing that's interesting about the car is that it's a true four-seater. I can actually sit in the back seat of this car behind myself in the front seat and be fairly comfortable. It's not some place I want to spend a lot of time, but it's some place that I can spend a half an hour back there to go out to dinner or something like that. And a decent sized trunk too, if you want to take a look at the trunk. You can pack a fair amount of luggage in there for a, for a weekend trip. If you want to uh, climb inside, we'll, uh, we'll take a look in there as well. One of the things that you notice when you look at the interior of the GTR is it's very business-like. There's not a lot of excess, excessive design. 
What they wanted to do was make it functional so that all the gauges are in a single plane as you look across from the tachometer to the multifunction display. All the gauges are at the same height so your eye doesn't have to move up and down as you're glancing back and forth between the gauges as you're driving the car. Multifunction meter is probably one of the uh, things that the GTR is best known for. It's a touch screen and you can actually go in and adjust the display on the first four screens here so that you can put up engine oil pressure, engine oil temperature, select this one to put something in here. Oh, we'll put coolant temperature there. So you can put all the parameters for the engine pretty much up on engine and transmission up on the display. So you can choose whatever you want to display on the first four screens. This, the fifth through the 11th screen, they're set. What's going to show up on there? This is the acceleration screen with acceleration G's, boost pressure and accelerator pedal position. Braking G's, speed and a braking pedal position. Steering gear position fuel economy, and there's actually a stopwatch built into it as well. And then a, uh, for a rally type setup, there's a, a driver's notes screen. But honestly, my, uh, my favorite is, is the one that shows all the, the engine parameters. Uh, three setup switches here. The first one is for the transmission speed. The second one is for the, the shock settings for damping rates. And the third one is for the vehicle dynamic control. It's a stability control setup. If you push it up and hold it, the red light comes on for R mode. This gives you uh, shifts in 0.2 seconds, a much quicker shift time, but it's obviously more abrupt when it's quicker too. Same thing with the shocks. You can put them on an R setting. It stiffens the shock damping so that if you're on the track and want to drive hard, it, uh, it corners a little bit flatter and a little bit higher cornering rate. And on the VDC, what it does is switches to using the all-wheel drive system to help control the stability of the car. In normal mode with the VDC, it's uh, using the brakes and the throttle. It applies individual brakes to bring the car back in line on its intended path and reduces the throttle opening. Whereas in R mode, what it does is uses the all-wheel drive system to, to keep the car on its intended path. So it's, it's made for track use, where it doesn't slow the car down as much. Then the other setting is, obviously on VDC, we allow you to uh, go to the off position if you want. In addition, on the shocks, you can set it in a comfort mode, which uh, softens the, the uh, damping rate just a little bit. And with the transmission, there's actually a snow setting that slows down the, the shift speeds. And every time you turn the car off and turn it back on, it defaults back. The car was actually designed to be less tuner friendly and it's not because we want the car to be modified less. It's more of an issue for regulation purposes in Japan. The, the authorities in Japan are very concerned about highly modified cars being on the streets. So um, in, in deference to, to the authorities, we tried to make it more difficult to modify this generation of GTR to, to satisfy their wishes. And that's, that's why it was done. It's not for for Nissan's purposes that we don't want the car modified. It's, it's more that uh, we simply wanted to make sure that we were being good citizens and trying to work closely with the authorities to satisfy their wishes. The wheels do have sensors in them for the t uh, tire pressure monitor system and for wheel speed sensors uh, that it confuses the ECU if you change out the wheels and don't change over the uh, valve stem along with it because that's where the sensor is. Um, but there is a speed limiter on the GTR in Japan. There is not a speed limiter on the GTR in the US. And it's done for regulation reasons in Japan. And it has a GPS system in Japan that recognizes when the car is on a racetrack and will turn off the speed limiter. And then once it leaves the racetrack, it'll reapply the speed limiter. But that is not in place for the US car. The big difference is that the uh, vehicle dynamic control is uh, having an R mode that uses the all-wheel drive system is unique. Almost uh, all Nissans have the, the standard setting of VDC that this, uh, this car has, but the R mode is very unusual because it's for track purposes only.